I, I think that many of the measures that were taken created a sense that other people were a threat, that uh, you know they, they need to be avoided, uh, we need to distance ourselves from them, uh, we need to see them as sources of infection. Uh, if they have any questions about anything that we do, uh, they're arrogant and they're wrong and they're weird and they're conspirator theories and uh, yeah. they, 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 they just need to be dissociated from the body of society. They, they need to be further marginalized. And, and unfortunately, I think that this led to marginalizing a very large number of people, um, probably preferentially people who were already marginalized to some extent or disadvantaged or had less opportunities compared to others. John, I'd go farther. I mean, I think the policy we adopted was if you couldn't have picked a policy better tailor-made to privilege the, the laptop class. Yeah. Like it was, a, it was a policy that only people that could afford to work from home without losing their job could benefit from. And for the rest of society, it was, it was, it was bound to create disaster. We, we, we see that in the data about fatalities, uh, COVID-19 fatalities in the U.S. We, if you stratify them by uh, racial background and educational attainment, we have data, unfortunately, that are mature only for the first year, but they show differences of 27-fold. So that was not a pandemic for everyone. It was yeah. a pandemic for some people who were sacrificed, and it was probably... Um, mostly vacation time for mm. some privileged people yeah. who you know, just continue to, to get their salaries, continue to do whatever they want to do. Uh, they had low wage people work for them and be exposed. I, I mean, I, I, I've been imagining or trying to imagine a, 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 a policy of focus protection that, that understands that there's a, a thousand fold difference or more in the risk of severe disease for oldest versus youngest. And I'm, I'm imagining what a, a response really focused on that could look like. We, so we use Uber Eats to deliver food to older people at home so they don't have to go out. We, we uh, make hotel rooms available when, um, when someone, you know, like a, 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 a grandma is living in a house with a grandson, grandson calls and says, oh, I'm, I, I might have been exposed, grandma. Grandma calls pub local public health. Local public health then brings grandma to the hotel for a couple of days until grandson's cleared. I mean, we could have done an all of society approach with the mo the most important risk factor in mind, you know, old age. I mean, yeah. we could have we could have restructured our, our approach around that. And I, I mean, I don't I'm not arguing don't spend the trillions of dollars we spent. I mean, I think a threat like this deserved a, a tremendous amount of expenditure. What I'm arguing for is exp expend it on where it would do the most good, would, where we'd integrate people together. In a, in, a, in, a, in, in a way to try to protect the people that are most vulnerable as opposed to privileging people who happen to be rich, who happen to have jobs that didn't require sacrifice anyways, and then pretend as if they're um, morally upright because they're able to, to comply with the orders.